Hi, this is John with Chest Freezer Cold Plunge, and today I'm going to show you how to use an ink bird to control your chest freezer. This is the preferred method to keep it from turning into a giant block of ice and is much easier to, uh, it's really more maintenance free than uh, using a timer to run the chest freezer. So let me show you how this works. The instructions that come with it are not really great. So I'm gonna go over this in detail to uh, make it really easy and simple for you. And depending on which version you have, uh, you can, I'll show you how to program the actual device itself on the device. And then I'll also show you how to use the app if you have the Wi-Fi version. Programming it either way is fairly simple once you know how it works. So let me give you an overview of the controller itself and uh, we'll show you the two different ways to program it. First of all, here's an overview of the actual hardware. First of all, you have the main device and at the top, there's a place to put a screw so you can hang this on a wall. You have two control panels. There are two lights, one for heating and cooling. There's a set button and you have two buttons with an up and down arrow. I'll show you about the LCDs in more detail in a minute. There are three cables that come off of the device itself. The first one plugs into the power. Now, depending on what country you live in, you'll have a different type of plug. This is a type A plug that works in the US and in Canada. If you live in another country, you'll have a different style of plug. The second cable has the outlets that you plug the device into that is being controlled. There are two of them. One is for heating and one is for cooling. Your chest freezer will plug into the plug for the cooling. If you live in a very cold environment and you want to prevent your water from turning into a giant block of ice, you can plug in a heater or a heating element to heat your water up and prevent it from turning into a block of ice. The third wire that comes off is the sensor cable. People have been using the Inkbird timer for at least two years that I'm aware of, and I haven't heard any problems reported so far. However, somebody just recently told me that this uh, sensor is not waterproof. So if you want to err on the side of caution, it would be a good idea to seal around the diameter here between where the uh, plastic meets the metal. Uh, you could use JB Water Weld. That's my preference. Um, you, know, you don't need a lot, just enough to cover up either side. Maybe a little bit of tiny bit of light sanding around either one of those would be good. If you're using an ozone generator, whatever material you use to seal should be compatible with ozone. So let's talk about how the device itself works. After the device is plugged in, you'll see that the two LCD panels light up. And if you have the Wi-Fi, this little light will be flashing. So the first thing, the top LCD panel is your current temperature. And then the bottom LCD panel is your target temperature. To begin programming, all you're going to do is press and hold the set button for about three seconds until the screen changes. So what will happen on the top LCD, T, it looks like T5, but it's TS. This is temperature set or set the temperature. So what you're going to do is set your target temperature. So let's just say that you're starting out and you want to have your water... let's say at 55 degrees. That's a great place to start if you're just beginning. So after you have your target temperature, your set temperature in place, you're gonna press the set button one time. HD stands for heating difference. So I, I would keep that at two degrees. If you're using just the chest freezer, most likely you won't need this. Uh, but this would mean if our target temperature is 55, at 53, the heater would kick in. So you press set again, and this goes to CD. This stands for cooling difference. I like to set this at two degrees. You can make it warmer or cooler if you want, but I found that two degrees works really well for me. And this means that when the temperature is two degrees warmer than your target temperature, in this case, if our target is 55, that would be 57 degrees, it will turn on the cooler. Once you press the set button again, it will go to AH. And what this means is the alarm high or high alarm. And so when the temperature exceeds this uh, temperature range, the alarm will go off. I would set this at a high range, uh, you know, maybe not 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but um, a lot of people have reported this alarm going off a lot. And you really don't want that to happen because uh, it'll annoy you like crazy. It'll set off an alarm on the unit as well as on your app if you have the app in place. So what I would suggest is just maybe set this at something that would cause a problem. Like if your temperature got above 60, hey, you want to come out here and find out what's going on. So 
but you want to set this at a range to where the alarm isn't going to be going off all the time. So you press the set button one more time, and this goes to AL, which stands for alarm low. And this is basically the low temperature. If it gets too cold, what do you, when should the alarm go off? So this is set at negative 40. That would basically mean it would never go off, which is great. I mean, if you want to keep it at those lower high values, that's totally fine. Um, <clears throat> you can just, it depends on what you're doing with your practice. You know, if your water gets down below 32 degrees, it's going to start turning into ice. It'll probably start turning into ice cubes before that, but, you know, this would be just an example here. When you press the set button again, PT will come up, and what this stands for is the compressor delay time, and this is measured in minutes, and basically this is going to just really help protect your equipment from turning off and on too quickly. That really shouldn't be an issue, but you know, if you set this to four or five minutes, it should be totally fine. Most chest freezers are designed to go on and off um, pretty much as needed, so this really shouldn't be too big of a deal, but if you set it for five minutes, that's a good, um, that's a good amount of time. The next one that comes up, you press set one more time, and this goes to CA, and that means for calibration. The unit is calibrated from the factory, so you really should not have to calibrate it, but if, I would say maybe once every six months, you might want to check it, and uh, this just means that the degree of offset, if you need to make it uh, warmer or colder, uh, if you find that you have a calibrated thermometer that you're testing this with, uh, you can make that adjustment here. Again, for the most part, you probably should not have to fiddle with this at all. Once you're done with all of those settings, um, actually, let's just do this one more time, and this will let you um, press the set button one more time, and this will allow you to choose between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And then just press and hold the set button for three seconds, and then you're ready to go. Now for the app, what you're going to do to start with is pull up, uh, you'll need to download the app, the Inkbird app, onto your phone. And when you get that installed, the screen will come up and what you'll need to do is register. You'll need a valid email address and password. And once you've done that, just press register. And it will send you a six-digit verification code. You put that in and then it will come up to the initial screen. First thing you need to do here is to add a home. Press on that, and it'll come up with a place for you to add the name of your home, whatever you want to call it. All of these other buttons on here, you can deselect the ones that are checked. You don't need them, and you don't need to put in a location. Do go down to the bottom and press Add Another Room. You can name the room whatever you want to call it. The room is actually the device your chest freezer and then once you have that set press done and then you'll, you'll be taken to the next screen just press where it says no devices yet and then that'll pull up a menu of all the devices available find your inkbird itc 308 and press that and then it'll take you to the next screen you want to look at the device and make sure the little wi-fi indicator is flashing if it's not to get it to connect to your Wi-Fi network, all you need to do is press and hold the Wi-Fi button. And then it'll start flashing for you to go to the app. Once it does that, you can just press where it says confirm indicator rapidly blink. And then you'll need to put in, make sure you got the right network or Wi-Fi network selected. And then you'll put in your password and then just press confirm. So from here, it should recognize the network and the password pretty quickly. If it doesn't, you might need to move closer to the router. That could help. If it takes a while, it's probably going to not connect correctly. Once it does connect, <clears throat> what it's going to do is display the current temperature that the sensor is detecting. That will be in the middle. It'll tell you what mode it's in. It's in cooling mode right now. And then down at the bottom, it will show you what the set value, your target temperature is. So if you press target temperature, it'll take you, it'll just pull up a scroll menu. You just put in whatever you want. There's your temperature. You press complete. And then it'll take you back to the screen. Next thing you want to do is press settings. And then that will take up this screen, which goes through all of the same things that we did on the device just here on your phone. You can press any one of those. It'll pull up a scroll setting. And when you're done, just press complete and you'll go back to the screen. And that's how to use the app.